can Liberty win Conference USA in their first year under Jamie Chadwell? Now, this is going to be very interesting, a question that is exciting to answer, and it's interesting to see a lot of different things with Liberty. What do they do in their new conference? Can they continue winning against the bigger schools that they've proven they can beat in the past? And what does Chadwell's system do for a team that has plenty of offensive firepower? When you look at what Liberty has done in the past, especially the last couple of years under Hugh Freeze, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to compete for a Conference USA championship. This is a step down in terms of level of competition and from what they've faced in the past. And that's something that could be really exciting, something that's beneficial maybe for a first-year head coach in Jamie Chadwell. Now, we're losing a couple of players to the transfer portal you know, over the last couple of days that were key players for the Hugh Freeze era, but this is a Jamie Chadwell staff that knows what they're doing. Chadwell is a phenomenal offensive coach. It might take some time for them to get acclimated, for everybody to kind of understand what Chadwell is trying to do, what Liberty is looking forward to doing. And the schedule allows them to kind of make that transition, even if they don't have all those pieces in place on all of those questions answered. The non-conference schedule is really nothing honestly there's not much on here there aren't really that many games that i would say liberty can't win if if any i don't i think they can win every game on their schedule even with a new coaching staff now that thing that's going to make things difficult is having this new coaching staff every having all these players getting used to a new system a new culture that is going to be the biggest thing now i'm not going to say that they're going to go 12 and 0 but when you look at this is a step down and some of the teams that they've beaten in the past this is a team that can compete right away for a conference championship there aren't too many teams in conference usa that scare me honestly when you're looking at western kentucky obviously that is a team that's very dangerous you lose a couple of those those big time teams, specifically UTSA, who won back to back conference championships, they are gone to the AAC. So there's a, a pretty much a wide open door for anybody that wants to walk in and try to compete for that conference championship. Now, Western Kentucky probably is the favorite for most people, and that's going to be a tough team. As you see, they play them in October. That's a, a game to really pay attention to to see kind of that measuring stick of where does Liberty stand in terms of conference USA. Now Buffalo could be a game that's, that's a non-conference game that could be difficult. And honestly, after that middle Tennessee, old dominion, Louisiana tech could be better. There's not too many games where you should be super concerned. If you're concerned at all, if you're a Liberty fan now, Jamie Chadwell has, like I said, some work to do, but with the talent that he has returning, I don't see why fans would be, that worried when it comes to the schedule and look at what this conference has been over the last couple of years. It has not been a good conference. It has been one of the worst, if not the worst conference in college football outside of obviously those handful of teams. UTSA was one of those outliers. Western Kentucky has been very fun to watch as well, but this is a conference that has struggled in terms of being a, a good conference, a competitive conference, and Liberty should take advantage of that early. And it's just a matter of how much success they will find with everything going on. Now, the first thing that Chadwell has to do is figure out who his quarterback is going to be. Caden Salter showed flashes of his potential. We also saw a lot in Jonathan Bennett. So th these are two guys that and maybe accuracy is probably the biggest concern. And you're looking at two athletic guys who can make plays with their arm and their legs. And that's really exciting. However, it's kind of the old saying of if you have two quarterbacks, you don't really have one. And maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. But I do know when we watched what happened with Coastal Carolina, when Grayson McCall went down, you saw a team that still played really well and had lots of options. So having two quarterbacks maybe isn't the worst thing for a court or coach coming in with a new system, trying to get acquainted with his guys and figure out who's going to be a star player for them. Now you do lose two of your star players in day day Hunter and Shedro Lewis. Those are two big time players from last year that have entered the transfer portal. Now at the, as the time of this recording, they could come back. Now, obviously they have time to figure things out, but it's pretty unlikely they're going to come back at this point. And that's tough. I, I think you're looking at two guys that ran the football extremely well and also had capabilities of catching the ball in space. That's going to be tough to replace. Now, you're also looking at some wide receivers coming back. Noah Frith is coming back. CJ Yarbrough is a super underrated receiver, in my opinion, 
who's going to be the guy to step up? We don't really know. That's going to be a big question for Liberty. It's going to be a big question for this offense. And also with what Chadwell runs, that I think that's my bigger concern is what do you have for running back talent? Because when you look at what he did at Coastal Carolina, you had a trio, and that trio is returning of running backs that can get the job done and makes that offense really tough to defend. You don't really have that go-to guy, so someone new is going to have to step up, and that's going to be tough, honestly, for this team to kind of overcome. Finding those players won't be easy. Finding those players to make an impact early, that's where the big concerns come in. Now, when you flip over to the defense side of the ball, one of the good things that Chadwell did at Coastal Carolina was find defensive players that can make a big impact. Now, what is Treshawn Clark's status? I think with Darrell Johnson leaving for the NFL, you're looking at Clark as maybe that go-to guy on the defensive side of the ball. You also have Kendy Charles in the middle. That's another player to keep an eye on. There's a lot of guys and a lot of talent that I really like. It's just you don't really know a lot of times Who's going to be a guy to step up with a new coaching staff? Who's going to be the guy in a new system that maybe fits that system better or maybe didn't thrive last year and is going to thrive because of the new coaching staff or guys that did thrive last year that are going to do the opposite? There's a lot of things we don't know, and we're probably not going to know until about a month into the season. Still, this is a Liberty team that has a ton of talent. There's a lot of exciting players that we already mentioned that should be, once again, really good in 2023 what does that mean for this team i don't really know i really like jamie chadwell i really like the pairing of him with this talent with his talented roster but then again i also thought data hunter and shedra lewis would fit well in this offense but now they're gone maybe it's the culture fit maybe it's this the scheme fit i don't really know all i do know is this team should still be fine. They still have plenty of talent. They have a good coach with a great offensive mind, and he is someone that can put them at the top of Conference USA in year one, and that is something that will be probably the goal. That should be the goal on top of just getting acclimated, just turning things around in terms of culture into the Chadwell system, into Chadwell's culture. But again, this is a team that should be one of the better teams in the conference and a conference title shouldn't be out of the question.